Do you guys feel a bit sad when you look outside the window and it's raining? Maybe you want to feel sad when you look at your computer screen or a phone as well. If so, you've come to the right place. In this video, I'll show you how to make rain animation using WebGL shaders in 3GS. If you have no idea what shaders are, I'll put a couple of links to materials that helped me a lot to start learning them in the description. We will begin with an empty project. I'll create one using a tool called Vid that has everything needed for a small project like ours. The only dependency we're gonna need is 3GS, so let's install it right away. Now we can run the project and see if it works. Ok, let's delete all the text now. Instead, we will set up 3GS. As always, we need a scene, a camera and a renderer. I will enable anti-aliasing and set the correct pixel ratio, so that it looks smoother. And then on every frame we will just render the scene. To remove white paddings we need to set the body margins to zero, other styles are not needed. Cool, but all we render now is nothing, so let's add a simple red plane to the scene. We also need to move the camera a bit back so it actually sees the plane. Now we're ready for the shaders. Let's create a vertex shader first. All that it does now is it passes the UV coordinates to the fragment shader and calculates the position of the vertex. We need to set UV interpolator ourselves, because 3GS only provides UV attribute to the vertex shader. And the position calculation is the same as it would be in the default shader, as shown in the documentation, so we don't change them here. Then in the fragment shader, let's just show these UVs. In order to see them in action, we need to load and assign them to the material. Now we have this peachy gradient, and that means the shaders work. Then let's pass some data to our shaders as uniforms. The first thing we will need is time. I'll register it in the material and update it every frame. We can test that it's correct by animating the gradient. Another thing we will need is the background. I prepared this picture we'll use. Let's import it, load as the texture and pass to the shader. In order to see it, we also need to sample it in the shader. Notice how it still moves when we update the UV coordinates. It looks a bit trippy though, so let's disable it for now. The background is a bit stretched. That's because our plane is a square and the picture is not. Let's fix it by getting the aspect ratio from the image and applying it to the plane. We're done saving things up now, and everything else will happen in the fragment shader. First, we will need random numbers, but shaders cannot generate them. So we will use a little trick. This weird looking function will return the seemingly random value based on an input and a seed. And this website called the Book of Shaders has a great explanation of how it works. Basically, if we take a sine of x, multiply it by a big enough number, and then take a decimal part of it, we'll get a seemingly random pattern. And we'll also need another version of this function, that returns a random float based on a 2D vector. By the way, all these numbers are not special, it's just me being random seed generator and making numbers up. Let's see how it looks. I think it's random enough. Now let's start making drops. I'll create a new function that takes UV and the seed as parameters. For every seed value this function will generate different drops. First, I'll split the plane into cells by multiplying UVs and taking their decimal parts. Each cell will contain a drop. Then I will use our random function to move each row. We can get a row index by taking the whole part of the Y coordinate. And we'll also move the whole thing randomly as well, so that the drops will be kinda randomly positioned based on the seed. To show a drop, let's get the center of each cell and return one if the point is close to it. Now we don't want all the rows to be filled, 
So let's randomly remove some of the drops. Drops usually evaporate with time, so let's simulate that. I need a good function of time to use this drop intensity. Let's start with y equals 1 minus the decimal part of x, so that the drops appear instantly and then gradually fade away. I also want them to stay hidden for some time, and that requires y to be negative. To make it slower, I can multiply x by a small value. And finally, I don't want it to be linear. To fix it, I can then multiply the result by itself a couple of times. Just remember to keep the sign. Looks good. Now let's put it in the code. I'll also add some random values to time, so that the drops are not synchronized. Again, all these magic numbers are just some random values generated by me, or some parameters I manually tuned by trial and error. Alright, kinda looks like rain, but a very slight one. We can fix it by doing the same thing 10 times over. We'll use the loop index to set different seed for each drop batch. Finally, I want the drops to actually affect the background. Let's try to look at the physics. So let's say this is a drop. It's kinda like a lens, so let's pretend it's a perfect one, and it has a focal point. That means if a ray of light goes through the center of it, it does not change. But if it's higher, it actually hits the bottom part of the background, and vice versa, and the further the ray is from the center, the bigger the distortion is. We could try to figure out the correct math, but it sounds like something that requires thinking, and I'm not a big fan of that. So let's just try to hack our way into something that looks similar to this. So first, for each fragment we need to find the vector to the center and normalize it. Then we need to multiply it by the distance to the center. Let's do it twice to make it non-linear, and then multiply it by some value so it's not that small. It looks weird now, but that's okay. Now let's try to apply it. Since the drop values are actually distortions, we need to add them to the UVs and then sample the texture. Wow, it actually kinda works. To be honest, this doesn't look like real rain, but it kinda resembles it and it looks nice. And that's enough for me. There is of course a lot of stuff I'd like to improve, but let's leave it for another video. I hope you enjoyed this one though, and goodbye.